What's up, everybody? It's Taylor Twelman from Major League Soccer and Apple TV. After an extremely disappointing week from the MLS contingent in CONCACAF play, those teams needed to find some redemption in the league. The Revolution found their first win of the regular season after head coach Caleb Porter guaranteed victory midweek. Inter-Miami get theirs, and everyone else's favorite player, Lionel Messi, returns, scores 12 minutes into that return, but they draw it home to the Colorado Rapids. Ouch. And then the Columbus crew. Well, let's start there. From their academy to MLS Next, to MLS Next Pro, and the first team. The Columbus crew under Tim Bezbachenko have been a perfect example of how to maximize the different ways to build a roster. You add the hiring of head coach Wilfred Nancy, and all of that goes up a notch. Or 10. He's got a unique way of managing a professional team with an idea of how to galvanize the group collectively with an identity, but also developing players individually, which gives them more depth than many other teams. But none of this is really maximized if you don't sign a sure thing as the face of your franchise, your stud, your goal scorer, Cucho Hernandez, who in the blink of an eye, Looks like he went from the best number nine in Major League Soccer to one that looks like he hasn't scored in months. But that's the point. He has. But something happened two weeks ago in Charlotte when he subbed off the field, which then led to him being suspended internally for the next two games. Which, for the record, I want to make this clear. One game is enough, especially if the rumors are true about him having a go with a coach in the heat of the moment. Who hasn't done that? But the second game suspension it killed the Columbus crew. They were at home versus Tigres, who were very gettable in the moment. Now leg two on the road, not as easy. But Cucho Hernandez returns this past weekend in MLS play against DC United and gets a red card. See, here's my biggest point on this. There is a fine line between reprimanding and reminding a player that the team comes first to taking away the edge that makes some players tick. Cucho's fantastic to watch, great energy, contagious, and he looks like he's a solid teammate. So I think I speak for all of the Columbus Crew fans that hope this is just a small speed bump. Or could this be the second straight summer that Columbus Crew move on from their most important player in the moment? Now let's go up north where there is a massive question seven games into the season. Now for Vancouver, it's six games, but follow me. Are Vancouver Whitecaps that good? Or is Toronto the same as a year ago? Or the three wooden spoons in their franchise history? Start with Toronto, where you get the feeling that start may be a little bit of a mirage. They started the season with three clean sheets. They actually only gave up one goal through their first five. But now they've given up seven goals in their last two games. They were completely outplayed in Vancouver. And now Toronto fans are now worried a little bit that that start may be a little bit of a mirage. I'm not sure it was, but only time will tell with the injuries and the roster decisions. However, the talking point is Vancouver. Now the Whitecaps, listen, many of you are going to sit here and say, hang on a minute, look at their schedule. They've only had two away trips at San Jose, at FC Dallas, both of those mediocre opponents as it looks like right now. But I'm of the mindset, you play who's on your schedule. And up to this point, the Whitecaps have been solid and good in finding results. But this one was different. They had to be different. They had to be the aggressor. They had to be proactive, and they did so. Now, if you're asking me right now to handicap the rest of the regular season, are the Vancouver Whitecaps going to win the supporters shield? I don't think so. However, in a Western Conference that is uncertain as the weather here in the Northeast, by the way, it's 68 and sunny today. Anyways, I digress. Beware of a team that collectively believes in what they're doing, but also as a coach that knows how to push the right buttons. I think Vancouver is going to be in the thick of it for a lot longer than many of us thought. But their next three, massive. Versus the Galaxy, at the Sounders, at the Red Bulls. We're going to know more about Vancouver Whitecaps over the next three games. Now, before El Trafico, I was asked on MLS Countdown by Liam McHugh if all the pressure in the world was on the LA Galaxy. I said yes because they want to answer the question, are they back? Did they do that on some level? Yeah, absolutely. They dominated possession. They were comfortable on the ball. They did a lot of the things that we've seen under Greg Vanny as his time as a manager in Toronto and LA. But Ricky Pooch wasn't very good. 
And I find him at times to be very confusing because I don't know whether he wants to be a 6, an 8, or a 10. And what do the Galaxy want him to be? But regardless, they gave up a ton of chances. And my concern for this Galaxy team is as good as they are going forward and as balanced as they are going forward, yeah, I get it. They lost the game on a dive from Denis Bowanga. They still needed John McCarthy to come up with five saves and five saves of good quality. They give up a ton of chances. And if John McCarthy is off on any given day, then you have to rely on your attack to score multiple goals every single game. And when you don't, you lose. I can't wait for July 4th. The rematch against LAFC, because it's going to look a lot different than what we saw last weekend. The black and gold will have different players on the roster. Olivier Giroud, to name one. However, so will the Galaxy. They'll have defenders that are healthy, particularly at the center back position, that are more athletic, that can run, that can maybe play a higher line. And then, who knows? Maybe we're still asking the question, are the Galaxy back? And if we are, isn't that an answer in and of itself? And finally, something is amiss in Kansas City. Because when Sporting Kansas City played home, they lose focus. And it started in their home opener. Alejandro Bedoya's 95th minute equalizer has now started a trend where Sporting Kansas City in three of their four home games have lost the plot in finishing games out. 2-0 lead versus the Galaxy, they lose 3-2. 3-0 lead versus the Portland Timbers this weekend, and they draw 3-3. Now this is the same team that went winless in the first 10 games last year to then make the playoffs, and arguably they were the better team in the West until a few injuries killed them in the playoffs. It's also Peter Vermees, who's been at the helm since 2009, the longest tenured head coach in MLS history. He has to be losing his mind right now because in all three games, they were fantastic from the start. Dynamic, but also effective in defending. And you only have two points to show for it from those three games. And now this Saturday, 70,000 plus at Arrowhead where Lionel Messi and Inter Miami come to your city after playing a midweek game in CONCACAF? No excuses this Saturday night. Because the last thing Sporting Kansas City want, and Peter Vermees especially, is a trend that finishing games at home is going to be an issue. We're going to get that answer Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. You can catch that game on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV while also checking out my interview with Eric Ramsey, the new head coach of Minnesota United who just left Manchester United. How has that transition been for him and his family? You can catch that on my podcast Offside on Apple Podcasts. <laughs>